Today I'm cutting open the all white AJ1 mids to kind of judge the leather quality of them and start answering a lot of the speculatory questions around sneaker heads and leather quality and kind of see how they're built as well. We've been doing a lot of my favorite sneakers with the Converse and Vans and uh, Crocs, but they don't have any leather in them. And my biggest strength in these videos is being a professional leather worker and being able to grade the leather. So I'm glad that we're finally doing some solid leather shoes this time. Um, but the reason that I wanted to do these is we've got the shattered backboards. The first run of shattered backboards coming up as soon as we reach that 100,000 subscriber mark. So that's gonna be an interesting one. I'm gonna upset a lot of sneaker heads with this one. But it's uh, this will give us a really good um, place to start when we're judging these other sneakers. Cause these are just basic sneakers you can buy anywhere and they should be pretty basic quality and give us kind of a point of reference for these thousand dollar sneakers. Now let's go over the basic information on these shoes. So the, the model is a Air Jordan 1s. These are the mids. And if you're not familiar with Jordans, there's basically three silhouettes. There's the highs and the mids, and then there's a low top version. And these were $115. They are made in China and they're the white on white colorway. So why are we cutting these in half and what are we trying to learn from them? So obviously the leather quality and this leather has a rolled edge all the way around through all the different seams. So it's really hard to see a cross section to be able to accurately judge the quality of this leather. So cutting them in half or cutting some of the leather in half is gonna allow us to see that cross section to really judge what's going on inside the leather. And then a lot of comment sections, forums, and videos talk about how the mids aren't quite as good of quality as the highs. And so cutting these in half will allow us to see how these are built and what's on the inside and kind of the construction of them. So that when we cut some of these other shoes in half, we'll be able to compare the cross sections to see if there's different materials in them or if it's just literally that extra one inch between the mids and highs. Now let's talk about the leather and kind of the information we can gather from it without cutting it in half, cutting them in half. So there's basically two types of leather on here. The first one is the Nike swoosh. It's a patent type leather. And the second type of leather is basically the rest of the shoe. It looks like it's just a pebbled uh, finished leather. So let's talk about the patent leather first. So I'm not 100% sure that this is even leather. But uh, patent leather, if you're not sure what patent leather is, it was kind of introduced into the footwear world in the early 1800s. It was a way to make leather a lot more shiny and more water resistant and to make it look a little bit classier. And it was basically a process where they put a heavy top coat of a lacquer based in linseed oil on top of leather to give that really high shine. But in our times, patent leather is just a shiny leather, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's high quality. It could just have a really heavy layer of shiny plastic on it. So just cause it's patent leather doesn't mean it's really high quality. So we'll see when we get it cut in half and get this part taken off how high quality this patent leather is or if it's even leather. And then to the rest of the leather. So this is an embossed pebbled leather. And how do I know it's embossed? You can tell it's embossed because it's got a repeating pattern and uh, usually a pebbled leather is a tumbled leather and this leather is still pretty firm. A tumble, when they tumble leather, it's made to soften it up and it's usually not as distinct and repetitive and even of a pattern when it's tumbled. That's kind of a telltale sign of an embossed leather that's kind of has a fake print pressed into the top layer. And then to the, the finish on top of this pebbled leather. So if it looks like plastic and it feels like plastic, it usually is. And that's what this leather is. It's a finished leather that has like a really heavy coat of either a paint or a rubber or plastic on top. And there's really two reasons they do that to leather. One is to give it a really nice even finish to make it look really sleek, I guess, or really consistent. And they can do that with high quality leathers or they can do it with cheap leathers. Um, or the second reason is they have a cheap leather and they want it to look like a nicer leather. So they just throw tons of plastic and paints on top to make it look like a higher quality leather and then press an embossed pattern on top and you've got a nicer looking leather. And then to the type of leather that this is, based on the price point, I'm guessing this is a chrome tanned leather. Usually you wouldn't find a vegetable tanned leather in this price range of a shoe. So I'm willing to bet it's 
chrome tabs. And if, if you're completely confused on all of this, I've got videos that go through all like the leather basics and how to grade leather. And I'll put a link to the playlist or the individual videos of the leather grading and leather quality videos in the description. So you can watch those and kind of get caught up on what we're talking about. So the next thing I want to talk about is the construction of these shoes. I think this is a similar construction to how like the Converse are made where it's a cemented sole, but there's stitching on the side here as well. So I think it's kind of a combination of um, a stitched sole and a glued sole, kind of like how a boot is constructed. And that's really interesting to me because I like the potential strength and longevity of this style of construction. But once again, we'll have to cut it in half to see what's really going on. And if, if the if stitch on the outside actually adds any strength to these shoes. So that kind of leads us to the next section of this video. Let's cut it in half and see what's going on inside of these things. Okay, we got them cut in half and I definitely heard the pop of the uh, air unit on the inside. So let's see what's inside. So it looks like it's a uh, pretty basic construction. Starting with the outsole, you've got the rubber outsole that's surprisingly thin. Then you go to the layer that has the air unit in it that's surrounded by layer of foam. And it's kind of like, I would call it, a, I think it's a thermal foam. And then above that, you've got a layer of like a low density foam topped with the insert that's glued in. It's not a permanent glue. It's more of just a adhesive. And then from there up, you've got the upper, but to really see what's inside of here and kind of how it's constructed. I'm going to tear the rest of the guts of this out and see how it's built behind all these little layers of fabric and stuff. But one thing I got wrong is this isn't all leather like I expected it or, or suspected it was. So if you look at if you look at the cross section of this toe part right here, the little toe cap, see how you can't see the little fibers of the leather and it's just a solid color all the way through. And if you're able to look really, really closely, you'd see that it's just, it's kind of a foam topped with a layer of plastic that looks like leather. So. We'll tear the rest out and kind of see what's leather and what's not leather. Every time I do one of these dissections, I'm always super surprised and I'm always wrong about everything. So there's a lot less leather in here than I expected. So to kind of show you the parts that are not leather, the toe cap right here is not leather, but the piece that wraps around it is. And then the swoosh here, the Nike swoosh is not leather. It's kind of a felted fabric that looks like leather. And then the piece underneath the swoosh is not leather. 
and the heel counter cap is leather and then the piece above that is leather the piece above that's leather and then this part right at the cuff is not leather so surprising a surprisingly little amount of leather in here i don't think that's a horrible thing for the price point but if i was buying these in a store i would and i picked this up i would assume it's a full leather shoe but it's not um, some other things that were interesting is I, I really like this construction style where you've got the typical stitch that stitches this insole to the binding on the inside. And then you've also got that stitch that runs on the outside that stitches the upper to the um, sole and the part of the sole that comes up to the side. And uh, I think that's a really strong construction style. And I, I really like these shoes because of that. I always wondered if they had that that was a faux stitch or if it actually helped with the strength of the shoe and i couldn't hardly cut these in half let alone tear them in half so i was pretty happy with how they how strong they are because a lot of times with the really finished leather with a really heavy layer of paint or plastic on top it's not as strong of a bind because if the layer of paint isn't bonded well to the leather then that just separates from the leather and the whole thing comes undone kind of like the Knock off Doc Martens. Yeah, very interesting stuff in here. So now that we've got a cross section of the leather, let's talk about the parts of this shoe that are leather. So if you see, you can see this bluing on the inside here. That is a telltale sign of a chrome tan leather. It's a cheaper leather than a veg tan leather. And if you look at the cross section really closely, you can't see any of that visible grain. And for a really short, fast version of what the grain is, different structures of the, of the leather, I'll put a little thing right here. But basically the grain is the top portion of the hide that's facing outside of the cow. It's the strongest and tightly, most tightly packed fibers and it's um, the most sought after part of the cross section of the hide. And then it, as you go down, the fibers get loose and not as strong. And a lot of times in a tannery, they'll cut off the top section and send it to the highest quality um, manufacturers are who, who are making the, the most expensive stuff and the lower quality stuff when they split it in half will go to a cheaper production and these shoes are made of that split portion because you can't see any of that visible grain so this is a cheaper leather and also a lot of times when you see a bluing on the inside of a cheap leather it's a even worse sign but this is a cheap leather there's no visible grain it's a chrome tan leather um, so I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's on par for the price of this shoe, but uh, anyone saying this is a really high quality leather is wrong because it's not. And once again, if, if this is all went over your head, I've got a playlist of all the leather quality and judging leather videos. I'll put it in the description and on one of these little cards, wherever they're at. So now I'm really interested to see, you know, what type of leather they use in, in this shoe and the other highs, because a lot of times people will say, that the mids are the cheaper versions of any high tops, not just necessarily the shattered backboards. They say they use higher quality leather. So this will give us a really nice um, starting point and stuff to kind of judge each uh, shoe moving forward off of because we know exactly what this leather is now. We know how it's constructed and we know which parts are leather and which parts are not. So that pretty much wraps up the all white AJ ones. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you're a sneakerhead and I got something wrong, let me know gently if you will if not it's fine you can be rude in the comment section it just hurts my feelings a little bit and also if you enjoyed this video consider liking and subscribing and commenting because it makes a huge difference and all those little teeny clicks that you do is what makes these videos successful and makes it possible for me to cut apart shoes and give you the information on what you're spending your hard-earned money on so thank you guys so much for all your support and see ya